Just like it's like mad wild. I'm going just in time. I'm at work today. I'm really busy. Yeah, uh, but I'm on a break now. And I remember I wanted to say something about the white stag in Liverpool that was killed. Some of have asked me about that. Yes, this is a big deal. Uh, as soon as I saw the story appear on my newsfeed, whatever day it happened, that a white stag had been shot by police in Bootle Pool, I knew it was significant, big time. And uh, a very dark and evil thing. Now, first of all, you have to wonder about the, the psychology of a policeman who would shoot a white stag or any stag in the middle of a city. Now, particularly, I, I, I would have to believe that the, the person that shot him was not English, or was not British, or, even, or quite, was probably quite possibly an immigrant. If they were English or British, they have no soul, because it would be like shooting an American killing a bald eagle, or a... Uh, you know, whatever. It's it, it, that that the image of the, the white stag is so ingrained. Jeez, I just made it in just in time. Just the image of the English stag is so deeply ingrained in English folk and Celtic folks are wider. That it's such a deep archetype to take a weapon against such a creature is to annihilate innocence itself. And the the white stag in Celtic folklore. And that's how it made its way into English folklore. It's the belief that um, it's the guardian that leads you into other worlds and the protector of purity and innocence. So, you know, a lot of a lot of folk stories begin with someone in the kind of you know hero's adventure thing walking into a woods and seeing a stag, a white stag, and this white stag it begins is the beginning of the adventure. The beginning of the call, the beginning of the journey into the other wood, worlds. Now, this poor creature was seen in an urban area in Liverpool that had wandered into. Now, that's extremely significant. It was almost like we we're, you know, with, at, with the whole lockdown and everything, it was a message to humanity from the collective unconscious, from the great spiritual dimension, that humanity is has has been has not been called to adventure it has been locked and made in lockdown and made into a prisoner by dark evil forces and we've lost as a result our spiritual childlike a desire for adventure we become cowards afraid of the rona and uh, this is why it was it was slew by this this animal this low life whose soul is damned. If you're the copper who shot or gave the order for that, or, or shot or uh, were involved in that fiasco, your soul is damned. You will not go to, to the next life. You will not be reincarnated. Your soul has now been damned beyond beyond imaginable things. If you are sort of a, an immigrant who did it, you, you, your soul isn't damned, but you've, you've scored points with your demon god from the Middle East or whatever you have, you, you have you worship. Now, uh, I would imagine that the one... The, the, the copper who shot it is probably already dead because this the deep-rooted folklore and suspicious superstition about the white stag is also deeply ingrained in royalty and monarchy heron the hunter and so on the white heart half the pubs in the south of england you see so many are called the white heart h-a-r-t and uh he was probably been. He probably already dead anyway. The one who did it. It, 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 you know, I'm sure like royalty ordered his death immediately for doing it, and so we were probably he's probably dead. They said it was a Rona or something like that. We don't know his name of the one who actually did it. So you never told. But uh, to do it in Liverpool of all places, a very magical city. Carl Jung once had a dream where he he, he declared that Liverpool was the pool of life, even though Liverpool is not named after a, a pool. It's named after a liver bird, a type of type of a bird, the liver that lives in the estuary of the Mer of the Mercy. The Mercy it really should be called Liverpool. But he, he he said it was he said it was the pool of life, and life during this lockdown during this Rona has ceased to be. We can't travel. We can't go on a call to adventure. So this beautiful innocent creature emerges from the woodlands, to remind us to call to adventure, and the same oppressors. 
that were shooting rubber bullets at the tradies in in Melbourne are the same ones that are arresting old ladies for even mentioning on the internet that they don't like their own lockdown. Uh, they shot the white stag, the white heart. And that was a ma an act of deliberate monumental evil. And also a turning point. It's the point where the control grid overstepped its breach and will now begin its own deterioration and annihilation. At first I was very upset about the whole thing. I said, how could they kill such a beautiful animal? But then it dawned on me, the kind of, this is part of the, the theatre, uh, the drama, uh, the, the magical unfoldment, that the white heart had to die in the streets of Bootle for the hearts of men to be liberated. Uh, this is a very, very bad omen for anyone involved in law enforcement, uh, anyone involved in council or city councils, anyone involved in health and safety. It's a terrible omen for them. It means that they have now cursed themselves monumentally through this one act of horror. And uh, if they don't, you know, and, and I guarantee you that the certain ones, particularly the, the UK, you know, aristocratic occultists, will be shitting bricks over this. They'll be trying to make amends really, because they know it will be a, a fatal flaw for them. A white heart to be killed, a white stag to be killed on the battlefield would be probably mean the end of a king. The end of a monarchy. So the royals in Buckingham Palace are probably shooting bricks over this. They probably just they probably already killed the guy who did it, had him annihilated, had him assassinated, and they're probably desperately trying to offset a way to not see the end of their kingdom. So on that sense, it's a good thing, but it's a prophetic thing. It's a sad that the animal had to die. But yeah, that was a very, very powerful, significant event. And the moment I heard of it. It's not necessarily negative or bad for us, but it's a ter terrible portent for anyone involved in law enforcement, health and safety and city council government who are involved in the killing of these animals and that particular one. And it was telling us at the greater level that we have, we have lost our sense of, it, of it called, being called to adventure, to step into the domains, to seek freedom to seek liberty because of this monstrous laws around the Rona and all this. And what we're being told now is that here in clear and present danger is the oppressor. Here's the clear and present debt, you know, the cause of it. And uh, when I said last week we are all Melbourne now, we are all the tradies in Melbourne now, this happens right after. A black clad piece of shit working for the government with a gun shoots the, shoots the white stag dead. Uh, I wouldn't want to be a member of law enforcement now, going forward. And uh, that creature's soul will live forever. And it was a very powerful portent. Watch Liverpool. Keep an eye on Liverpool. And the name of the, the name of the suburb was Bootle. B-O-O-T-L-E. I know it, actually. And uh, pay attention. Because there may be something happening regarding this. But uh, the White Stag is immortal and has not died and uh, it's it's the one that slew it is forever damned to dissipate him on the threshold of the tenth age of the abyss